Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, December 24th, 2021. Thank you so much for spending this time together with me in God's word today as we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. For a while now, we have been focusing on the life of Abraham. Today in our Old Testament reading, we will conclude the Bible's account of Abraham's life and then we will transition over to looking at the family records of Isaac. But before we turn our attention to Isaac and his family, we will look briefly at the family records of one of Abraham's other sons, and that would be Ishmael. Abraham had taken another wife whose name was Keturah, and she bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan fathered Sheba and Dedan. Dedan's sons were the Asherim, Letushim, and Leumim. And Midian's sons were Ephah, Epher, Hanok, Abida, and Eldaah. All these were the sons of Keturah. Abraham gave everything he owned to Isaac. But Abraham gave gifts to the sons of his concubines. And while he was still alive, he sent them eastward, away from his son Isaac, to the land of the east. This is the length of Abraham's life, 175 years. He took his last breath and died at a good old age, old and contented, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar, the Hethite. This was the field that Abraham bought from the Hethites. Abraham was buried there with his wife, Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who lived near Beer Lahai Roy. These are the family records of Abraham's son Ishmael, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's slave, bore to Abraham. These are the names of Ishmael's sons. Their names, according to the family records, are Nebaioth, Ishmael's firstborn, then Kedar, Abdil, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Timer. Jetur, Nafish, and Kedema. These are Ishmael's sons, and these are their names by their settlements and encampments, 12 leaders of their clans. This is the length of Ishmael's life, 137 years. He took his last breath and died, and was gathered to his people. And they settled from Havilah to Shur, which is opposite Egypt, as you go toward Ashur. He stayed near all his relatives. These are the family records of Isaac, son of Abraham. Abraham fathered Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took as his wife, Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel the Aramean, from Padan Aram, and sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord was receptive to his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, conceived. But the children inside her struggled with each other, and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. Two peoples will come for, from you and be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When her time came to give birth, there were indeed twins in her womb. The first one came out red looking, covered with hair like a fur coat, and they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out grasping Esau's heel with his hand. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when they were born. When the boys grew up, Esau became a, an expert hunk, hunter, an outdoorsman. But Jacob was a quiet man who stayed at home. Isaac loved Esau because he had a taste for wild game. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field exhausted. He said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff because I'm exhausted. That is why he was also named Edom. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, Esau said, I'm about to die. So what good is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to Jacob and sold his birthright to him. Then Jacob gave bread and lentil stew to Esau. He ate, drank, got up, and went away. So Esau despised his birthright. 
As we move into our New Testament reading, we move into a section of Matthew's Gospel in which Jesus turns our attention to the end of time. He is going to talk about the signs that we can see as we approach the day of his return, and he also is going to give us the encouragement to persevere during these times, knowing that in the end he will come back and he will take his people home to heaven. As Jesus left and was going out of the temple, his disciples came up and called his attention to its buildings. He replied to them, do you see all these things? Truly, I tell you, not one stone will be left here on another that will not be thrown down. While he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples approached him privately and said, tell us, when will these things happen? And what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus replied to them, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, because these things must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these events are the beginning of labor pains. Then they will hand you over to be persecuted, and they will kill you. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, betray one another, and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. A man on the housetop must not come down to get things out of his house, and a man in the field must not go back to get his coat. Woe to pregnant women and nursing mothers in those days. Pray that your escape may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For at that time there will be great distress, the kind that hasn't taken place from the beginning of the world until now, and never will again. Unless those days were cut short, no one would be saved. But those days will be cut short because of the elect. If anyone tells you then, see, here is the Messiah, or over here, don't believe it, for false messiahs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note, I have told you in advance. So if they tell you, see, he's in the wilderness, don't go out, or see, he's in the storerooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the carcass is, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near, at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. Now concerning that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, except the Father alone. As the days of Noah were, so the coming of the Son of Man will be. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah boarded the ark. They didn't know until the flood came and swept them all away. This is the way the coming of the Son of Man will be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding grain with a handmill, 
one will be taken and one left. Therefore, be alert, since you don't know what day your Lord is coming. But know this, if the homeowner had known what time the thief was coming, he would have stayed alert and not let his house be broken into. This is why you are also to be ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master has put in charge of his household, to give them food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom the master finds doing his job when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says in his heart, my master is delayed, and starts to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards, that servant's master will come on a day he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.